Hi, part two, you made it. Maybe you jumped ahead, I tell you. Please go back to part one. Watch part one, you gotta watch part one. Does that make sense? Right, when you watch something on TV or a movie, it's always part one first, then you go to part two. Well, it doesn't matter if you jumped ahead, no big deal. Let's have some fun here. Okay, so we're doing a teapot, and like we said in part one, if you did decide to skip ahead to part two, that's fine, no worries. Um, we did a preliminary drawing first, a preliminary sketch, which was um, basically we took our teapot and we just got the basic shape of it onto our paper very carefully. We went around, but very lightly, super light. And we got our proportions correct and we made sure that the handle was the right size. And we also made sure that our locations were correct with our top of our teapot lid. With our handle, we made sure that we checked our level marks, right? So we looked across and we used our pencil. We held our pencil out in front of us up in the air so that we could use this as our measuring tool. So we just hold the pencil up in front of us and we check and say, okay, well, if the top of the lid is here, how far down is it to the top of the handle? And we noticed it was about maybe two or three of these um, uh, top of the lid, this small uh, finial here. And so we said that was about three of those. And that was the top of the handle. Or actually it was more like two. One, two, about here. And the same thing was with for the for the spout so the spout was so we care just super lightly did a preliminary sketch very incredibly light then we went ahead once we did that then we used that as our our foundation in our guide and then we did our contour drawing so then we carefully of course we had our teapot set up across from us on some foam board just like this piece of foam board except a lot larger this is a mini version of the foam board taped together and then on the table and then we sit our teapot on top of this and then we have a light on top a little spotlight it's like a desk lamp and that's over here like this shining down and we did our contour drawing so we carefully went around slowly checked our angles and in part one, between part two, I just did a quick look and got some of the more details as far as where the shadows are um, on some of the more uh, intricate spots on the uh, teapot here with the handle. There are some areas where I wanted to just put a few little light lines to help me better understand when I'm going into paint. Does that make sense to add those little lines here where the shadows are? So this way, if you add in those small little, you know, very light pencil lines where the shadow and the light are, you'll be able to capture that a little more easy um, when you're painting. If you paint a lot and you feel you don't need them, that's fine. Some people, I know some of you probably paint a lot without drawing so much. So some people that don't use a lot of pencil drawings tend to use their paintbrush almost as a pencil so they kind of are used to working with their brush and they are a little more careful with where they put their shadows and light but I think it's always a good rule if you feel like you need a little extra marks on your paper to help uh, kind of mark out where your light and shadow are definitely go for it make a really light super light line these are little dark but you won't see them. I personally like pencil sketches a lot and so I don't mind pencil showing through the uh, artwork so I actually love that. <clears throat> so but everyone's different so 
Okay, so we're ready to start painting. Let's get into it and do it. And so we have fresh water here. Uh, a damp sponge, just in case you want to check some water off um, onto the sponge first and then go into the paint. You can also just tap the brush a little bit on the container to check off a little bit of water before you go into the paint. And we have our miniature palette, which is a travel palette. And uh, that's about it. And we just have good watercolor paper. This is um, Fabriano paper. And, and that's, we're really ready to go. So let's start. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a darker background on the top of this. So I'm going to make the back of my foam board, which I have set up, I'm going to make the back part of the foam board. So if the teapot is sitting like this, if the teapot's sitting here, I'm going to make this back part dark, like maybe a blue-purple color. So let, I'm going to do that. I'm going to start out actually with some blue and purple and we'll get some darks in here. And I'll add in a little mixture of some uh, raw sienna too. And some cerulean. Now if you go with this dark background like I'm doing, you can fade it out. Now with this darker background, I, I will say that if we if you do do this darker background, we're probably going to have to let it dry uh, somewhat before we uh, start painting in the rest of the painting. So. Be willing to um, take a break after you do your dark background here so that you can... Now here what we'll do though, with the darker background, we're going to go in and do some of the shadowing. Because that actually looks really great if you can kind of tie in your shadow to the... into the background. So let's let's do that. And it gets a little lighter over here with some more gold color. So I'll use some goldish color. And there is some and if you get to a point where you think something is not looking good or you might have went over a line you can just pick up some paint with with a uh, tissue like that. All right, I got to keep moving here quickly. I want I want to try to keep this
So I'm trying to keep this um, I want to keep that going there. The uh, uh, light and shadow and Again, if you have an issue, if you go over a line, no big deal. Alright, so that's looking really good. Let's get our shadow in. Here I like to do shadows quick. Uh, darker toward the underside of the Here is going to be darker, the paint. Shadow is, is darker closer to the object where the cast shadow is. Trying to get in some other colors a little bit. And then here we have a shadow. I'm not going to tie it in right away with the um, Okay, so that's so here I'm trying to carefully get the shadows. Um, There's some nice warm shadows here, gold, gold color. They get darker here again. I'll let that go. I don't want to work over here because this is still quite damp, the uh, background. So it's no problem. We'll just do a little splashing here. Um, we can tie in this shadow.
All right, we're we're doing well here. This is part two, and we have so I'm trying to kind of work around here, and I. So here, I'm going to change my water out quickly. That's always a good thing to remember. Ch change out your water when you're doing like lighter sections, lighter tonal values. That'll help to um, be able to um, get the lighter tonal values. And. A little bit of blue, a little bit of a yellow ochre over here. Lights coming from this direction, so. I'll use a little bit of cad, or, uh, CAD lemon. Cad lemon yellow is good. It gives a feeling of light, warmth. Shadow areas. All right, so we're kind of um, we're getting there. And then we'll we'll drop in some more shadows where we we have uh, shadows being uh, cast out on the side of the teapot. There's a little more there. All right, so this is is pretty good. Um, the best thing we can do now is we will let this dry and we'll do the fine calligraphy here. So we'll, we'll do a little high speed drying. We'll use a blow dryer. And we'll get some drying going here.
Okay, so now we're, we'll do some fine calligraphy here on our teapot, and I think we'll um, we'll stick to our same color pattern. I don't think I'm going to go too far out of the colors we've been using here. I think it's better to um, to just sort of stick with the um, colors we have, um, the blues and maybe some green. And my goal here is less is more, so I will try to make this very uh, loose, free. I'm not going to So a couple um, really quick and easy uh, flicks of the brush and, and you can really, it looks much better than really suffering over trying to get every detail. So that's why I do it that way. And I'll, we'll take some red for the berries here. Some alizarin crimson, some cadmium red, maybe a little bit of yellow ochre. Looks good. And there was a little bit of calligraphy here, so let's I'll add a little bit of uh, <clears throat> cadmium yellow just to the, the uh, if you haven't marked you don't uh, a little bit of wash that doesn't look good now we tap it up a little bit with the bra uh, That looks good. I, I think we have a good teapot here. I think it looks um, fine. And you could do a little more touch-up, but I think too much more touch-up on this one would kind of ruin it. So the effect is kind of loose. Uh, you know, a quickly done painting, that's just really getting the real basics of what we see. And that sometimes is all you need to have a really nice looking uh, um, composition here to uh, draw from. You can save this. We can we can save this. Does it make sense? We save this uh, composition. We set it aside. We put it in a folder. And then if we, uh, in the future, in a year from now, we're going to do a teapot maybe or something, we can just take it out of the folder and remember back to when we did this. And it'll kind of click back with us when we did it the first time. We said, oh yeah, that's right. I remember I did the shadows here and here and I used you know the different colors and you can kind of see the colors we used in the background here so this is all great stuff to save um, when you do your small comps and uh, you'll have a, a lot easier time when you're um, uh, doing your paintings in the future if you can refer back to your small comps you do now alright everyone we'll see you on the next video bye bye for now